It's not unusual for superheroes to develop a bit of an ego. I mean, if you were able to leap tall buildings in a single bound, it would be hard for it not to go to your head. But sometimes that ego can get out of control and give you an overinflated view of your own abilities. This is Top 10 Nerd, and today we're counting down the top 10 superheroes who aren't as powerful as they think they are. Number 10, Mr. Fantastic. Reed Richards has the ability to stretch himself, elongating his limbs, and manipulating his body to various different shapes. But his other power is that he is is the smartest man on earth, a title he is more than happy to accept. This is also the power that constantly gets him into trouble. His ego often prevents him from even considering other people's points of view, leading him to instead charge ahead with his own plans. While this does often work out in the end, it's a prime example of how overconfident he is in his own intellect. In fact, the accident that caused the Fantastic Four to get their powers was caused because he stole a ship he had designed that the government had determined was unsafe for space travel travel. He decided he knew better, and as a result, the ship was bathed in cosmic rays, turning the passengers into the Fantastic Four. Now, this was a good thing for the world, but all the pain that Ben Grimm endured as the thing could have been avoided had Reed been able to listen to anyone's opinion other than his own. Number 9. Iron Man. Much like Mr. Fantastic, Tony Stark's true superpower isn't his mechanical suit, but his intellect. This has led to some truly spectacular bouts of ego that have caused a lot of problems in the Marvel Universe. A great example of this ego run amok is when he, Mr. Fantastic, and Yellow Jacket thought it would be a good idea to clone Thor. This Thor went mad and ended up killing Goliath. Iron Man and Mr. Fantastic both have such an inflated opinion of themselves that they formed the Illuminati. A group designed to unilaterally make decisions for the safety of mankind. This directly led to the events of World War Hulk. So I guess that one didn't really work out how they thought it would. Number 8. The Superior Spider-Man When Dr. Otto Octavius, better known to the world as Dr. Octopus, learned he was dying, he used a brain-swapping Octobot to switch bodies with Peter Parker. While in Peter's body, he retained all of Spider-Man's memories, which served to show Doc Ock that with great power comes great responsibility. With Parker gone, Octavius decided to continue his legacy as Spider-Man, making the transition from supervillain to superhero. Of course, being the egomaniac that he is, he believed that he would not only be able to fill Peter's shoes, but would be a better Spider-Man than Peter Peter ever was. Hence the moniker, the Superior Spider-Man. To Auk's credit, he was an effective superhero, successfully defeating many of the original Spidey's villains, including the Sinister Six. However, he was unable to keep his more brutal nature in check and ended up killing the villain Massacre, something the true Spider-Man would never stoop to. When fighting the Goblin King, Octavius eventually realized that Peter Parker was the truly superior Spider-Man and ceded control of the body back to its original owner, sacrificing himself in the process. Number 7. Jean-Paul Valley. Batman. When Batman's back was broken by Bane in the Nightfall story arc, Bruce Wayne chose Jean-Paul Valley to assume the mantle while he recovered. A former member of the Order of Saint Dumas, Jean-Paul had a previous career as the vigilante Azriel, making him a strong choice for the role of Batman. Valley was all about making the role his own, making upgrades to his bat suit, and taking on a more sinister and brutal persona than Wayne ever did. Because of psychological conditioning by the Order of Saint Dumas, Jean-Paul's mental health went into serious decline, resulting in him letting the villain Abattoir fall into a vat of molten metal, something that the original Batman would, of course, never allow. When a recovered Bruce Wayne confronted the new Batman, Man about his actions in Robin Volume 2, Number 7, and tried to strip him of the mantle, Valley declared that Bruce was unworthy of the cowl and declared, and I quote, I am the Batman, I will always be the Batman, and no one, saint or devil, can take it from me. Now that is a man who is confident in his abilities. But the idea that he was a better and stronger Batman than the original was quickly proven wrong when the two fought in Legends of the Dark Knight number 63. Jean-Paul learned a valuable lesson in humility, and Batman learned that it's not a great idea to entrust your legacy to a crazy monk assassin you barely know over someone like Dick Grayson. Number 6. Lobo. Although this space bounty hunter is often more villainous than heroic, his time on the Justice League makes me comfortable giving him a spot on this list. Besides, his arrogance is too iconic not to include. Lobo is thrilled with his own abilities, often referring to himself as the main man. He has come into conflict with Superman on a few different occasions for no reason other than he wanted to show off that he could beat the Man of Steel in combat. Now, Lobo is undeniably powerful. 
But anyone who thinks they can go up against Superman and have no trouble defeating him is suffering from delusions of grandeur. As he learned in their fight in Superman Man of Steel number 30, which ended with the main man getting punched into orbit by the Big Blue Boy Scout. Number 5, Namor. The ruler of Atlantis in the Marvel Universe, Namor the Submariner, is an undeniably powerful superhero, being able to fight multiple Avengers at once. His arrogance is also unmatched, as he considers himself stronger and smarter than anyone else he has ever come across. His arrogance is on such a level that he once described it as his speciality. He has such an inflated ego that he considers himself smarter than Mr. Fantastic, despite never offering up any evidence for this other than his own opinion. Look, it's not that Namor isn't incredibly powerful, but no one could ever be as amazing as he believes himself to be. Number 4, Damian Wayne. The grandson of Ra's al Ghul and the son of Batman and Talia al Ghul, Damian was raised and trained by the League of Assassins for most of his childhood, making him a cunning warrior. When he finally met his father, his inflated opinion of himself was immediately apparent as he tried to kill Tim Drake in order to assume the role of Robin something he felt he deserved because he was Batman's son, rather than because he had earned it. When Dick Grayson became Batman and made Damien his Robin, Damien would repeatedly state that he was ready and able to be the new Batman. When Bruce Wayne returned to the job, he and Damien would clash often, with Robin often declaring Batman's restraint and compassion a weakness. Although he has mellowed over the years, his arrogance has repeatedly led to him thinking himself above his teammates and underestimating his foes, getting himself into trouble that other members of the Bat family have had to rescue him from. This arrogance led to horrible consequences in the City of Bane storyline, when Alfred was being held hostage by Bane and the Flashpoint Batman. Damien ignored the warning by the villains for all Bat family members to stay out of Gotham, and was captured by the Flashpoint Batman. As punishment for breaking these rules, Bane broke Alfred's neck in front of Damien, ending the faithful butler's life. Number 3, Guy Gardner. Earth's third Green Lantern, introduced in Green Lantern Volume 2, Number 59, Guy Gardner is known just as much for being an arrogant jerk as he is for his truly bizarre haircut. Guy grew up in an abusive household, never feeling as close to his parents as his siblings. This is likely why he has allowed his position as a Green Lantern to inflate his ego so much. Despite having the same powers as the other Green Lanterns, this doesn't stop him from expressing his perceived superiority. This inflated sense of self often makes him clash with other superheroes on the Justice League most notably Batman. This conflict came to a head in Justice League number 5, when Guy challenged Batman to a fight, even claiming that he could beat the Caped Crusader without the use of his Green Lantern ring. To the delight of every other League member in attendance, this resulted in Batman knocking Guy unconscious with one punch to the face. Number 2, Booster Gold. A former security guard from the 25th century, Michael Carter, was tasked with guarding various superhero artifacts at the Metropolis Space Museum. Instead, he decided to steal the artifacts, including a time machine, and use them to become a super hero in the 20th century. One of the few heroes who became a hero for the express purpose of becoming famous and making money, Booster is known for exploiting his status as a superhero by involving himself in ad campaigns and movie deals. He is extremely confident in his abilities despite the fact that he can often barely handle sea level villains, and his subpar intelligence usually ends up getting his fellow heroes in more trouble than he prevents. A great example of this is when he prevents Bruce Wayne's parents from being killed so they can attend Bruce's wedding. Not really realizing that this will result in an alternate dystopian timeline. Number 1, Hindsight Lad. It takes a lot of confidence to join a superhero team when you have no powers. Well, sometimes this results in team members like Black Widow or Hawkeye who are able to bring a lot to the table despite their disadvantage. Every once in a while, you end up with a hindsight lad. A self-proclaimed superhero fan, Carlton Lafroige, learned that his neighbor was actually Speedball of the New Warriors. Wanting to join the team, Carlton blackmailed Speedball into letting him join, threatening to reveal his secret identity of Robbie Baldwin if he refused. When the team pointed out that he had no powers and wouldn't be of any help, he declared that he was a strategic genius who could offer them invaluable advice in any given circumstance. When asked how he could accomplish this without going on the missions, he responded that he would provide the information after the fact. So basically, the warriors would get their butts kicked, and then Hindsight Lad would tell them what they should have done to avoid it. All the other heroes on this list may have an inflated sense of their own abilities, 
but Hindsight Lad is the only one who is able to rise to such a high level of arrogance despite having nothing to offer. Are there any heroes who you think aren't as powerful as they claim to be? Let us know in the comments below, and make sure to like this video and subscribe to Top 10 Nerd. Oh,